Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Barrett with Espresso Outlet. I have the DF64V in front of us and I've been waiting to do this burr swap. So the DF64V, it comes with these DLC, which is diamond-like carbon coating, and it's applied to the burr and it's, it's really cool. I have an article that's written up on the Espresso Outlet blog. So if you go to our website and you hit up the blog, you'll find more information about the DLC coating. But today, what I want to do is put in SSP multi-purpose burrs. They have quite a bit of a different cut profile than these espresso, they're espresso centered burrs. Um, you might get a couple more fines, but I really think it's perfectly acceptable the way that they are today. But I really like these burrs. So we're gonna do a burr swap, and then we're gonna do a follow up. I'll, I'll probably do some espresso shots tomorrow, so we'll follow up on this video. Um, I did do a alignment video, and these burrs straight out the box, completely just awesome alignment. Okay, so we got this upper burr carrier. And there's our DLC burr. It's been hard for me to photograph just because it's black, it absorbs a lot of the light. There is some shine. Uh, they, they look a lot more premium in person. I can tell you that. Uh, have a little bit of grounds that we're just gonna kinda tap. Might brush them off. I use a little compressed air just to make sure that all the particles are off. You're going to want to put this rubber airing back on. And it does kind of want to flip or roll off. So this is your fixed burr. And note on SSP there is a rotary and a fixed. So we're going to use the fixed burr. We're just going to gently put it in there and throw these screws in. Let's do one at a time. I typically like to get my burrs pretty close and then I'm going to tighten them in a circle. Okay, so we're going to start snugging these. You don't need to break anything, but you do need them pretty decently tight. Don't strip out your screws. And if they're hard to grab, you might grab just a little screwdriver or some compressed air and blow the grounds out. So there's this awesome burr. We'll put side by side. These are super cool though. Now we do the same thing with the bottom. I don't think that these are burrs that have a top and bottom, but we're just gonna go ahead and put a T on this one. I'm gonna put a B on the other one when we take it out. These can be fun with this rotating top to get out sometimes. It's usually not too bad. Man, they are in there. This part can be a little fun to try to pull this out. I might end up flipping it over to get the burr to come out. I don't want to scratch the burrs, but I want to get these screws out. There we go. 
Let's see if I can get it out. I bet I can't. I'm gonna flip it over. While I had the camera paused, I went ahead and blew all the grounds out. We do have another one of these little O-rings. Make sure to put that in there centered. And then we're gonna take our rotary burr and align it with the holes. There we go. Uh, there's our screws. Same thing, we're just gonna get them just a little bit tight. Okay, so right off the bat, since we have this open, we're going to check the alignment. So I got a dry erase marker. If you haven't seen this done before, I have an entire video just dedicated to aligning burrs. So stock out of the box, there was no shims under the burrs and it was, it was fantastic. I know everyone was super worried about it. both top and bottom marked with our dry erase. Just be careful when you put it back in not to wipe it with your hand. And let's just put this thing back together. Okay, we have that on. So our zero is quite a bit different on this. You can see it pretty much bot bottomed out at about 25. I'm gonna back it off to 30. I really don't like running the grinder when I do the alignment because you really risk messing up your burrs, but I can't reach into this grinder when I did the test earlier. So we're going to just do it very carefully. And let's turn the RPM down. Okay, so those are pretty much touching. Back them off, and let's open this up. Now these are a little bit different cut pattern. They don't have the big, make sure it focuses. The camera does not like these dark burrs does not have these big flat surfaces. It actually has some very fine surfaces. So maybe I didn't touch it down quite enough. Um, maybe a little bit rough on this side, so I'd maybe shim. Hmm. I might give it one more go, but I think I'm gonna have to shim uh, maybe this side right here. Just a hair. It's honestly probably unnecessary, but I'm gonna throw a little shim under this side. So we're gonna take this off. And we wanna make sure that we put it in the same way that we took it out, but with the shim. And I'm just using foil, a little tiny piece. And we'll 
let's just set it right there. Piece is a little bit big. Oops, it kind of bent it over. And we're gonna throw this one out. I think that the before alignment was pretty good, but we're going to make this as perfect as we can. Let's put it back in. We're going to tighten it down. Okay, so that's all that was needed. I did a little piece of foil on either side of the screw and it is I would consider this perfect. These are hard ones to align just because you have these extremely small cutting surfaces in there. So these look really good. Really pleased with this. So we're going to reassemble it and let's try. I'm not going to make coffee. It's too late, but we're going to at least grind some coffee. So I mentioned before that we can readjust the zero super easy on this grinder. So I'm actually going to move it until it doesn't move anymore. I'm going to back off about one setting. Then I have an Allen wrench right here and it looks like it is a two millimeter Allen key. And there's a little hole on the side and you can loosen up this, this collar and you can set it on zero. and tighten the collar back down. No more stickers, no more real messing around. I don't know if it stayed in focus. I think it lost focus, but no more messing around. It's, I think, a lot easier. So we're gonna put it on maybe 17. Okay, I didn't weigh out these beans. We're just playing with these for the first time. I have it set on 1800 RPM. And we're going to set it on setting 17 because that seems to be what I've been using as I make espresso. I know that these burrs are going to be totally different, so it doesn't matter, but the grinder's on and running, so we're going to hot dose it. Sounds about the same. looks really awesome. It's a sec. I guess we'll find out more when we start to use this, but so there's our nice fluffy grounds. They feel awesome. Nice and fluffy. Let's try it on a coarser setting. So we have it on setting 60 and I have just another just arbitrary amount of beans, but I did set it down to 600 RPMs. Anti-popcorn works good. We're getting some just chaff, which is common. I know it's going to be hard to see in the video, but it just looks just super nice. I'm sure that there's a couple finds in there, but we'll play with this a little bit and see. Here's our espresso grind at full speed and this, this feel great. So those are about the two sizes that I'm going to use the most for espresso. It's going to be probably around that 17. I could be wrong on these burrs. And then the other day we we're using about 60 size. And this looks, I'd say, perfect for V60. I could maybe go a little bit finer, but it looks perfect. 
So that's all I have time for today was that quick burr swap. We're gonna use it over the weekend with espresso and V60. We have a new hand grinder coming in from Turin. So you're gonna see some V60 on that as well. And should be a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, this is the new DS64V, I've been using it. Not 100% exclusively. Uh, I've been using the 83 a lot too as we've tested a few things. But I've been using it as much as I can. I've used it for a lot of shots and it's just ran perfect. I really like how quiet it is. Uh, when it's just running idle, it's like silent. You can't even hear it. When you're grinding, it's really no different than a regular grinder in my opinion. Uh, it's about the same as probably my DF64E. So if you have the DF64E, you might be familiar with that. Uh, I think it's it's quieter, or it's probably a little bit louder than the DF83 when it's grinding beans, but not by a whole lot. And all of these are pretty quiet, in my opinion. So thanks for watching. We'll do some more content as I get to play with these burrs, but I just need to get them dialed in. So thanks for watching.